Grace City. How are you this morning? Are you doing better now that you had ice cream? There's, I mean, this is the, the way that we roll at Grace City. We have ice cream for breakfast, right? On Sunday mornings, anything goes, right, you guys? So we had an amazing Between Friends this last Thursday, Entre Amigas on Friday. More than 600 women showed up in total um, on these Thursday and Friday, and uh, my daughter, Nicole, was sharing the word of God. Can we give a round of applause for that? Woo, woo, woo. One of the girls' tables did this little gift, and they gifted it to me, the Yes and Amen. So quick announcement for Yes and Amen conference, right? Come on, sign up, girls. Get to conference. It's coming up. And then also, all of the Dream Team that's wearing their Connect uh, group shirts. Can you stand up so that and just like show them off to the people around you if you're wearing your connect group shirt? All these people wearing shirts are opening up a connect group. Yes. And so they're going to wear the shirts today, Wednesday. You better wash them though. Uh, next Sunday and next Wednesday. So we're wearing them for two weeks. If you see someone with a connect group shirt, you can ask them about their connect group. That way you know what, and they can explain to you what their connect group is all about. I'm actually starting my Connect group via Zoom on Mondays. Quick announcement on that. 7.30 p.m. to about 8.15. And um, the Connect group that uh, myself, Patty, and Carla decided to do together is one on the book, Forgiving What You Can't Forget. Really intense material, but we're going to do half a chapter every week. And we just believe that God, yeah, I mean, God had placed it in our heart. We're believing for miracles of forgiveness and actually building upon the Word of God and during seasons of things that we've passed that we can't actually forget, but we can forgive. So this is what Connect Group is all about. It's about connecting with other people so that you can do life together. Don't do life alone. Don't do life alone. If you see someone wearing one of those shirts and you're like, oh, hey, tell me about your Connect Group, okay? Ask them about it. Let's dive in the Word of God. Are you ready for a word? Hey, so during this series, and I want to just put it out there as a thought, I would love you to bring a notebook. When you come to church, I would love you to bring a notebook. I'm actually gonna start to instill this on Wednesday nights to bring your Bible. Like we're gonna go old school. We're gonna bring our Bible because I wanna do highlights. I wanna do, you know, circles. I wanna put notes in the, so we're gonna do Sunday's notebooks because we go pretty fast with the verses, but Wednesday's is more Bible study and I want you guys to bring your Bible to church, okay? So can we do that? Can we do that? So if you don't have a notebook, maybe you want to take out your phone because this is one of those sermons that it's not this motivation, no thing like where you're going to be clapping. You're gonna, it's to actually bring you um, the word of God in a way that you know what's going to be happening because Jesus is coming soon. That's the truth, you guys. Jesus is coming soon. And the message is titled today, The Signs, right there, The Signs. And you know it's going to be a good message when I actually quote Billy Graham. Billy Graham said the following, I believe that this in this world as we know it will come to an end. This is not fanciful imagination, but the clear and repeated testimony of the Bible. It is his testimony. And then he said the following, I have read the last page of the Bible. <laughs> and it's all going to turn out all right. You guys, this is not a horror story. I'm not trying to scare you into, into believing in Jesus. I'm trying to tell you that the whole concept is, of the Bible is that he loves you so much, that he misses you so much, that he wants to bring you back to him. Can someone say amen to that? Yes, we do not need to fear the end times. We need to wait for it with expectation. John 14, 1 to 3, and it has been the fundamental verses for this teaching. Jesus speaking says the following. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Turn your ear and say, don't get troubled. Yeah. Don't be anxious. Right? Don't, don't stay up at night thinking, oh my gosh, I'm just not going to make it. No. Don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Again, Jesus speaking, believe in me. Verse 3 says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. This is a promise. And take you. This is why he's coming back. He says, I'm going to come back, but I'm coming back with a purpose. I'm coming back to take you back with me that you may also be where I am. Can someone say thank you, Father, for that? Yes, thank you, Jesus, for that. See, the end times is not about the fury of God. 
It's about the family of God. It's about us going back with Jesus and being part of his family. This is why the first week we talked about the why. If you haven't heard the message, go to YouTube. You can um, hear the message there, the why. Because, and if you're taking notes, put the why. Because he loves me. That's what I would write if I'm taking notes. Everything God has prepared is because he loves you. So last week, which was week two, we talked about the what. What will happen? What is expected when the rapture comes, um, comes into play? The tribulation, the second coming, the, um, the supper of the lamb, all of that. So outlined, there's 22 books, 22 chapters in the book of Revelation, and we went through six major events in about 25 minutes. Can you say wow? (laughs) Yeah, so I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna sum that back up. There's just no way for me to do that. So first we did the why, then we did the what, and today we're gonna talk about the when. Say the when. Matthew 24. We're gonna be hanging out actually in the book of Matthew. So, um... Matthew and Luke are the only two that actually write about the end times. It's Matthew 24 or Luke 21. I want to encourage you to read it if you want to know a little bit more about that. So Matthew 24, 3 to 8 says, As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him. How did they come to him? Privately. So they have heard him talking about it. Like when he was on the boat with Simon Peter and he, he, th- what he talked about with all the people was about the end times, the second coming, like of him coming back, of him taking his people with him. And so they had already heard him talk about it, but now they got him privately. They're like, okay, you kind of talked about it with everyone, but we want to know the ins and outs. You know, we, we want to know the details about it. So tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming, I am the Messiah and I will will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are just the beginning of birth pains. That's the beginning. Say with me, the beginning. So he actually likens this. He uses as an example a woman that's pregnant. That's pregnant. Yesterday I had, I received really good news that one of my nephews, his wife, is pregnant. Yeah, we didn't know because they live in another state. So we would see them in pictures and we would look in their Instagram and she kept it a secret. She was wearing like the bigger shirt. She wanted to surprise us. But yesterday she, she arrives and had this little cute t-shirt on my niece that said big sister. And then she goes ahead and, and puts, you know, tucks in her shirt and she's five months pregnant. So her belly is out to here. I mean, there's a big difference in our bodies, right, from one month when we just find out that we're pregnant to five months. And then anybody that's been pregnant knows that at eight months, oh my gosh, not only emotionally, but physically, we've changed. But you know what I do notice is that once you get closer to the end, the changes are more drastic day by day. So at eight months, one week, it's very different than eight months, three weeks. And how about the day before? You can't even breathe. You're like, you, you're, not, you're not waddling. You're, ba- you're barely lifting up your, your, you know, you used to waddle. Now it's like, help me, help me. There's a huge difference. And let me tell you, That evidence shows that we are in the eighth or the ninth month. The world and what we're seeing does show that we are in the eighth or ninth month. We are very close. Jesus goes to say in Matthew 24, 36, but about the day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son. Jesus doesn't even know. Only the father knows 
when he is coming back, when Jesus is able to come back for his church. I remember when I was a child, I lived in Anaheim. I was born in Anaheim, California, just a few stops from Disney. And um, I remember we lived in this corner house and this guy knocks on our door and he's like, you need to come out right now. You need to come out. And you know, the Holy Spirit showed me, which I knew it wasn't the Holy Spirit, I didn't know then, I know now. But he's like, you have to come out. We have to make a circle because Jesus is coming right now. And if you don't pray while he comes, you're going to stay. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I was probably like eight years old. I had already gone to church. I had already been scared into believing in Jesus. Like that was the time when, when the movies were all out, you know, and you're just like scared. You have nightmares. And I go inside, I'm like, mom, dad, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming for his church. My dad goes to the door and was like, wait, what? And the guy's like, yeah, you have to come out. You got to take hands. You have to hold hands. We got to pray because Jesus is coming. And he's like, no, 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 no. You need to go away, crazy man. Because no one knows the day or the hour, not even the sun. So if some crazy is putting out there and, and predicting the day or the time that do not listen to them. Now, even though we won't know the day or the time, we do know the season. We do know the season. I don't know about you, but there's everything going on in the world and all of the confusion and the chaos and all of this stuff going on. In my spirit, there is that like, like you know when you're like, I better have the birth, the birth um, bag ready. Like the delivery bag, like it needs to be ready. I'm basically in that point where I'm like, I can't wait any longer. I can't wait as your pastor. I couldn't wait any longer to make sure you guys are packed up. Spiritually, I'm talking about, because you can't take anything with you. There are dozens and dozens of signs, and I can spend hours here talking about each and every sign, but I'm not going to. I want you to notice that all of these signs fall in two categories. Say two categories. These are the two categories. Come on, church, help me. Number one, increase of wickedness. Write it down, increase of wickedness. Yes, increase of wickedness. That's one of the categories that all of these signs fall under. That means that the bad is going to get worse. That all the bad in the world is just going from worse to worse to worse. Where you're like, where is it going to stop? Where? Like, this can't get any worse. And as soon as you say it can't get any worse, it does. There's another law put into, there's another march, there's another protest, and you're like, wait a minute, what's going on in California? Sorry, California, I'm a Californian, so I can talk about them, because I was one, okay? But I'm like, what are you talking about? You're paying for, for gender surgeries for children of five years old? Five years old, you're telling me a five-year-old that sometimes thinks they're a dog or a cat? You're gonna change their gender because they feel that they are not what their body says. I'm like, I can't, I can't take it. So Jesus actually said it this way, not my right, Jesus. Matthew 24, nine to 13 says, then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. This is actually something that people will hate you. It says, and you will be hated by all nations because of Jesus. You will be canceled. You will be unfollowed. You will be taken out of friend groups. You will be hated because you love Jesus. Because you profess that Jesus is the only way to God. You will be, be mocked. And I really believe in my heart of hearts that the church is actually not prepared for this. We're prepared to post something and get likes. We're prepared for people wearing crosses and, and saying the name of Jesus, but we're not actually prepared to be hated to be hated for what we believe. But I'm gonna get you ready. I felt in my heart, get you ready with values, with virtues, with in your character, with your morals. Like We're gonna preach the word of God. Can I get an amen to that, guys? Come on, church. And because we are so hated, Jesus says, and at that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase of wickedness. The love of most, this word most scares me. Because most 
is almost everyone. Most is the majority. We will become the minority because the love of most, they used to love God. They used to be in church. They used to raise their hands. They used to desire the word of God, but the love of most will grow cold. It says, but the one who stands firm, come on church, we're gonna stand firm. The one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Can I get an amen to that? Come on, go ahead, go ahead. You can applaud. You guys are actually applauding more than I thought. The apostle Paul teaches in 2 Timothy 3, one to five, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. Terrible is actually a word, when you look at it in the Greek, it's actually satanic demonic it's not terrible like oh this is bad no it's there will be demonic times in the last days people will be lovers of themselves does that ever sound like Instagram where it's like you don't post anything else but yourself what I'm doing what I love which is fine I'm not I'm all for Instagram what I'm saying is when everyone is all about themselves their body you know, like, look at me, look at me, look at me. They will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form, pause here. Listen to that. Having a form of godliness. Saying, oh, I fell from the Holy Spirit. Oh, it's because I love God, but I hate you, and I'm this, and judgment. Like, having a form. They look like Christians on the outside. They use the name of Jesus. They know all of the words. They know where to place things. They post of themselves on Sunday, but how's the life on Monday? How's the life in secret when the lights go out? It says, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. No longer having the power of the Holy Spirit, having nothing, I'm sorry, have nothing to do with such people. Now I know this is tough to hear when you're living in the middle of it. We are living in the middle of it, church. We are living in the middle of these horrible times. We have deconstruction of the nuclear family. No longer is family actually family or important. You don't need your family. This is a message to most of our teens. You got this on your own. They don't understand you. They're outdated, you can turn to this, you can turn to that, but no longer having this, this, this idea of nuclear family, gender confusion, sexual immorality. We are so extremely degrading. Our loss of respect for life. Can you imagine that now what God feels as he is in heaven watching us while people protest their right to kill children? Well, he sees people protesting and saying, we want our rights, we demand our rights to abort unborn children. What God is like, what is going on? It's no longer enough to just abort them. They will fight to the death. They will hate you if you are not in agreement with killing children. We live in a time where people protest and demand this. Children now having the ability to, you know, change their sexual organs and all of this confusion. We are living in terrible times, but I have good news. <laughs> but I have good news. God, it's all in God's plan. These are the signs. These are the fact that we are in the eighth month. We are getting close to the ninth month. The founder of Dubai actually was quoted saying this, and I want you guys I'm gonna put it on the screens. He said the following about his nation. He's the one that built Dubai, okay? My grandfather rode a camel. My father rode a camel. I ride a Mercedes. My son rides a Land Rover. And my grandson is going to ride a Land Rover. 
but my great-grandson is going to have to ride a camel again. Why is that, he was asked. And his reply was, hard times create strong men. Strong men create easy times. Easy times create weak men. Weak men create difficult times. Many will not understand it, but you have to raise warriors, not parasites. Come on, church. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to myself. And add to that that historical reality that all great empires, the Persians, the Trojans, the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, and in later years, the British, all rose and perished within 240 years. The United States, I think, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, Google it, 246? We're about that many years old? Somebody? Google, okay. 247, thank you. Somebody, okay. We're there. No empire has ever bounced back to the, from the degrading state that we are in. And then he finished saying, they were not conquered by external enemies. Look what it says there, what he said. They rotted from within. The family rots from within. The church rots from within. Your life, you start rotting from within. What is making our generation unique is that all of them, all of these signs, and this is what I want you to know, all of these signs are happening at the same time. So many people could have said, oh, there's wars and there's rumors of wars and all of this stuff is happening in all of the generations. For example, there's, but there's one detail in the book of Revelation chapter 11 that says that two witnesses will appear right in the middle of the tribulation. And it says that these witnesses will be killed and that the whole world will witness this. That the whole world at one time will be able to see this. We are the first generation that's actually able to see this happen because of technology. Because of the worldwide satellite technology. We are the first generation. When people in the past used to read this, they're like, how is this ever going to take place? There's no way. And there's another thing that it says in the Bible that there's a season where the Antichrist will only allow commerce to take place with a mark on the forehead or on the hand. And this mark, they're gonna be, it's not the mark in, in sense, of like a satanic mark, it's a mark of commerce. It says that it's a way for you to buy and sell. And this is the first generation that has this worldwide financial technology. All of these things are happening at the same place, at the same time. Again, we are the first generation where both these things are able. So that's why I say to you, I'm not saying Jesus is coming tomorrow. I'm just saying, church, be ready. Have your bags packed. Like, I don't want to be a pastor that's just preaching that you're, you know, you're a champion and you can do all things and you can do this, but then your, your bag's not packed. You're not ready. The good news is that, yes, we have an increase of wickedness, but the second sign, the second category of signs is that it's also going to be an increase of the gospel spreading. And we are seeing that. It says that our children will want to come back to the house of God. That our youngsters will prophesy. That we will see an increase in the fervor for God. And that is happening, church. Come on. So yes, yes, the bad will get worse, but the good will also get better. The holy will be more sanctified. You will never be more sure of who you are in Christ than when everything, when hell itself is rising up against you when everything has gone to the hills, <laughs> right? When everything, and but then you're like, wow, wait a minute. I'm still standing. I love God. Like, Lord, I've recognized it's only you. My eyes are placed on you. See, Jesus said in Matthew 24, 14, and the, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the whole world as a, oh, and this word jumped out at me, as a testimony. We will be living testimonies. Like you will not read a story, which we do read, and we're like, wow, Abraham, wow. You know, 
David, wow, Elijah, wow. You will be like, my house, my house survived. God has been good to me. He is our God. He is the God of my generation and of my generation. You will be so convinced. No one will have to talk you into loving God. You will no longer need a motivation to give, a motivation to worship, because you are a worshiper, because you are a giver, because you are a son and daughter of God. Can I get an amen? One more sign, one more sign. Time's up, but one more sign. Matthew 24, 14 says, so when you see standing in the holy place, the holy place is where that newly constructed, this is in the tribulation, okay? The holy place is that newly constructed temple where the Antichrist allowed them, the, the children of Israel to construct the holy temple. And it says, when you see this during the first half of the tribulation, which we're not gonna see because we're gonna be in heaven in the rapture, okay? And it says, the ab abomination that causes desolation. This is when this abomination of desolation is something that Daniel actually was quoted. He's the one that put this, these words together. And it's when the Antichrist at first is like, yeah, go ahead and build the temple. I'm your friend. I'm on your side. Three and a half years into the tribulation, it's like, uh-uh, I'm actually going to make a statue of myself. It, the glory was actually not for God. It's for me. I built this temple. I am the God of the time. That's the Antichrist. This is the ultimate insult to God. The ultimate insult to God is for us to build a statue of ourselves, for us to glorify ourselves instead of him. The Antichrist built for himself a statue and said, let the glory not be for God, but let it be for myself. This will happen three and a half years into the tribulation, but it's happening now. It's happening now. We're inside of churches, we're inside of lives, we're inside of our faith. We are constructing idols of ourselves, thinking it's about us. Let me tell you, church, it's not about you. It's not about me. All of the glory be to God. It is his word. It is his presence. It is his church. It is his Holy Spirit. It is the move of God. It is his time. It is in his time. He is in control. And it says that this will be the ultimate insult spoken of through the prophet Daniel. Let the reader understand. But I could say many of us say, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand this. Three and a half years into it, like I said, this will be constructed. When you read the book of Daniel, go ahead and read the book of Daniel. The first six chapters is history. The second six is prophecy. In the last six chapters, he gives prophecy of 77s, 490 years. Did you know that we are, we have the only book, the Bible, that is to the T, to every point, already fulfilled 483 years of prophecy? Already fulfilled, but we're missing seven years. Which seven do you think it is? The seven of the tribulation. For the 77s, the 490, this describes the last seven years. Listen to this, Daniel 12, 1 to 4. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written where? In the book. This is the Lamb's book of life that I talked about last year. When you receive Jesus. When you say, yes, Lord, it's not because of me, it's because of you. I'm not going to construct an idol for myself. I'm not going to construct, it's not about me, it's about you. Then it says, we'll be delivered, meaning you're not going to be here for the tribulation. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake. Some, you and I, to everlasting life. Others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of heavens. And those who lead many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, keep this prophecy a secret. Seal up the book until the time of the end. When many will rush from here to there and knowledge will increase. That's already happening. That's why I want to read this. Number one, we are the first, we are one of the first complete generations from the last hundred years that are able to fly. 
The first transatlantic plane was like 1919, 1916, where we're actually able to fly from here to there. Since World War II, that's where travel has actually increased. Daniel saw this, saw people traveling all around, and said, and also knowledge will increase. Did you know that before the 20th century, knowledge was not increasing? But in the 20th century, knowledge started to double every 25 years. By 2013, knowledge doubled every 18 to 24 months. And most people agree that today, say with me today, knowledge is increasing, doubling, not increasing, doubling, where people get double the knowledge every single day. We are the first generation to see, to have so much access to knowledge. People didn't have this much access to knowledge. They weren't able to look things up on their phone. That's why I was asking you guys to look things up. Because we're able to fact check. We're able to, what, what is this? Oh, let me, how do you make this? How do you do this? How do you fix this? How do you, we're able, we have all of this knowledge. So how can we be wise? How can we be prepared? This whole entire message is not to scare you to Jesus church. It's just my way to say, follow the signs. Like, look at the signs, you guys. Are you living your life just for yourself? Have you constructed for yourself an idol? Have you said, it's my life? I'm gonna do what I want, I'm gonna live how I please, and then when I get older, then I'll be ready. No, let me tell you, it's, we're at the eighth or ninth month. You need to tear down that idol and say, Heavenly Father, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to live? Please transform my heart, transform my mind. Allow me to love you more, more intensely. Bring me back to you, Lord. Jesus speaking in the last book of the Bible says, I'm at the door and I'm knocking. He's knocking. Just think it's so beautiful of Jesus not to push himself into your life, not to not to demand your love. He will never demand your love. He gives you the option. He says, I love you. And I've been standing here at the door day and night knocking. Will you open up that door? And he says, if you open up that door, I will enter and I will have, and I will have dinner with you. I will eat with you. We will be in relationship. So every eye closed and every heart open. Again, the, this message was not to scare you to Jesus, it's actually to love you back to him. It's to prove to you that God is in control and he's telling us, I love you and this is gonna happen and I don't want you to go through that. But there's no way you can buy your, your own ticket to heaven. I am your ticket to heaven, Jesus says. I've already paid the price. Will you receive me? I'm standing here. As you close your eyes, I want to invite you to open up your heart. Today is the day. Today is the day you came to church. And you thought you came because you said it in your mind. No, he brought you. He invited you. The Holy Spirit was there and was like, come on, get ready. You need to go. This is the day. This is your day. So he's standing at the door and knocking. You open up that door. Now church, let's pray. Heavenly Father, out loud, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I open up my heart and I am willing for your son Jesus to become my Lord and my Savior. I repent for my sins meaning I want to turn away from them. I no longer want to live the way I've been living. I need you. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. I believe that you died on that cross, but that you rose again. And because of the power of your blood, I am free from sin. I am free from death. I receive you, Jesus. Amen.